and welcome to this channel. Thank you so much for being here. I thought I would just do a little update because um, I made a video a little while ago about what it's like to do a PhD with three children and on that video I got lots of comments asking how did you become a lecturer? Um, how did you work on your career? What kind of career tips do you have? Um, so there's lots of questions about that so I'm going to make a few videos to try and answer some of those questions um, and so the first one I'm going to talk about is how I became a lecturer and some tips on uh, best practice and things that worked for me and things that I think might work for you as well if being a lecturer at a university is something that you would like to become or um, achieve as part of your professional career and uh, I thought it might be interesting to sort of hear my experience and I'll give you my tips along the way. So I first actually started lecturing um, when I had just finished my undergraduate degree so I was only like 21 at the time and I had just finished my microbiology degree um, and I was moving into my master's degree in public health and because uh, I'm quite a kind of personable person, like I'm quite chatty um, in real life and, and I'm here too. And this actually leads into the first tip, uh, which is networking. So when I'd first finished my undergraduate degree in microbiology and I was moving into my master's degree in public health, I was very good at sort of talking to people, staying connected with people, networking and being involved with different um, groups and different projects and I'm always very interested in research and all of the things that are going on at the university so I kind of opted to be part of these different voluntary programs that were running um, that were all about food science and the kind of biochemistry of food and that kind of thing and just because I found it interesting but also at the time at kind of 21 you're right at the start of your career and I think that when you're that young you want to take on as much to gain as much experience to make you a really good candidate for um, professional roles in the future so through that I became really good friends with a lot of colleagues and lecturers and at the time there was a technician who was working at the university and I became quite um, good sort of like I don't know like friends colleagues with, with the technician and the technician was also running some modules and he was at capacity and he was like look um, I know you've done the degree and you're doing your masters now do you want to come back and just do a couple of lectures on the biochemistry of food and the molecular biology of food and that kind of thing and I was like yeah great like I've just done my degree in that that would be fantastic and it was only two lectures in the whole year but then the next year he came back he was like do you want to do those two lectures again and I was like yeah great and then the next year after that he was like okay that module's running again um, I I don't know if you want to do like maybe a few more modules this time like four or five um, and I was like fantastic great because you know at this point I'd finished my master's degree and I was actually working for a radio station at the time and I was working in like health marketing and, and commissioning health marketing services for the radio station and so that's the start of my media career and my media experience at this point and so because it was only a few lectures and it was quite ad hoc I'd be like yep yeah, great I can just drive over to the campus because I didn't work too far from the campus it was only about half an hour um, so I could just drive over to the campus and then over the years you kind of network with other lecturers and at this point a new lecturer had joined the food science department um, and she was lovely and we connected and we're actually really good friends now I think she's amazing we've been friends for like over 10 years now um, and she's amazing and she was like great oh my gosh, I've got all of these modules, um, could you help out with these? And I took on some more modules and then uh, a couple of years later I moved down south for another profession so at this point I was head of department for a public health commissioning team and I still continued with the lecturing uh, because it was something I identified in my prof professional development review that I wanted to continue contributing to academic practice so as a practitioner uh, in the field I went into the university and I still did the biochemistry of food but then I also started bringing in some of my specialist expertise from things like um, 
the commissioning side of things and the designing contracts for health services um, because commissioning at that time was quite new um, and the way the structure in the UK was at the time it was shifting more into this kind of like um, commissioning procurement type approach um, and it wasn't just sat within the finance department it was sort of filtering out into the the wider departments um, so I shared a lot of that experience and expertise um, as part of the, the lecture series and then as you network and again more people hear about your expertise and think actually you know at this point um, there was colleagues who were running things in a different school in a different department but who wanted me to talk about my media experience so designing marketing campaigns for health programs and designing um, different things that I'd done at the radio station and then continued to do in my current role as head of department so at this point um, as my expertise diversified the my colleagues within my network were like actually could you come and do one on that that you're just working on in your day job could you come and tell our students about that so as it turned out after I left my master's degree at like 22 23 and went into the professional world and was kind of like just doing my thing professionally I was always like keeping in touch with my colleagues and still networking and then even in professional life you meet new people and when you sort of tell them oh yeah I'm a guest lecturer at this university and um, I'm an honorary lecturer at this other university uh, and these kinds of things open other doors so again another tip as well as networking I would say is be clear about what it is that you want um, because if you uh, tell people what you want you just don't know who has the opportunities to sort of um, facilitate that or support you in that journey so being quite open and sort of saying actually you know I, I love my profession but I would also really like to learn more academically or be more involved in research or whatever it is if you kind of put that out there within your networks opportunities will arise because the nature of like healthcare in, in, in England and also internationally is that there is often lots of funding opportunities, there is often lots of ways that you can um, work with other colleagues and partners so you'll have like international pots of funding that you can apply for through research grants or there will be sort of national approaches to research funding. And again, um, my big tip is to collaborate and to network and to sort of ask people if they want to be involved and contribute specialist expertise and try and learn as much as you can from them. I would say that's probably my third tip. I've always been really curious and really interested in other disciplines um, and I think that's really helped a lot in professional life and as an academic because if you have that interest you can understand the different agendas which I think is really important especially in my discipline so I'm registered as a defined specialist with the UK Public Health Register so that means that I can work as a consultant in public health and when you get to that level of seniority, it's so important to be able to understand the different nuances of departments and networking and partners and people have different agendas, people have different targets. So if you can understand that and if you've got a good understanding of all the different disciplines, then you can strategically facilitate a way to meet your goal that suits everybody who's part of that, that group. So learning about other disciplines, learning about other areas, I can't recommend that enough. Never think that's not my area. I don't need to know that because you will be so surprised. Like I'm in my 30s now and things that I learned just for fun, I had no idea would be so helpful in my professional and academic journey. So if you get asked to be involved in a project and you have an interest then and you've got the time, you know, I say go for it because that learning will never be lost. You never know when your learning will help you in a future job, a future career, a future project. So no learning is ever wasted. So don't be afraid to get involved in projects that may not be your specialist area. Anyway, fast forward sort of like another five years, I think maybe, um, and I was living right at the south of the UK and I was head of the department and the structure was shifting and at that point I was just about ready to to start a new challenge and I, 
after years of being like an academia and honestly I'm just a bit of a bookworm and a bit of a nerd at heart in fact who am I kidding a, a bit I'm a lot I'm a lot of a nerd I love reading I love science and I love teaching and I, I've the thing about academia the, the thing that drew me to academia was the fact that you could literally learn stuff for your day job. <laughs> so I was ready to take on that next challenge. Um, and so when a job came up at the university that I'd done lots of guest lecturing for like years earlier, I just applied for it and I thought, well, it's, you know, it's a new opportunity, it's a new chance. Um, went for the interview and got the job. So, you know, I think I got the job on like the Thursday and I started working the following Monday or something because um, they were quite short staffed at the time. And I was covering somebody's maternity leave at the time time um, and I just I loved it it was epidemiology it was what I'd done in practice so I'd done like the practical side of epidemiology in my day job and so I was then teaching the theory of that um, to the students and I absolutely loved it in fact I loved it so much because sometimes when you're in practice you just do what needs to be done and you just do the day job but there's never really a lot of time to fully understand the theory that underpins it. There's never an opportunity to just sort of like sit and read some academic papers and really kind of like understand why you're doing what you're doing. So to have that opportunity was just amazing for me. I loved it. I just, I couldn't stop learning. I couldn't stop reading. Um, I also got given a whole new set of subjects to work on which were not really my forte at the time which was all like research methods and statistics and things like that and at first I was like oh, I am not looking forward to this I mean we're talking like eight years ago now um, but once you get into it and again just to reiterate that point that no learning is ever wasted those critical skills and those research method skills are so useful. They are beyond useful. I use them for my PhD. I use them when I'm writing for academic publication. I use them when I'm reading journal articles and I want to know, is this reliable? Can I trust this paper? Um, and I have to say they've never been more useful than the pandemic. So trying to navigate reliable information and the misinformation through the coronavirus pandemic, having those critical skills is so important because you can look at a paper and you can say, okay, well, you're claiming this, but your methodology is really weak and you haven't really done X, Y, and Z. So therefore these really crazy claims that you're making don't really add up. So we can discard this paper as low methodological quality and so we don't need to worry about that for now. So that kind of approach to critical thinking and critical theory has been so valuable in my career and personal life and professional life to date. So again, no learning is ever wasted. Don't be afraid to take on new disciplines um, and don't be afraid to um, get involved in new projects that aren't necessarily your specialist area. So that's how I became a lecturer and then I was a lecturer for eight years after that before going back into practice and um, where I am now. Um, I'm just finishing off my PhD now so I'll be submitting my PhD fingers crossed this summer and then um, after when, when I become a doctor which I'm really excited about um, I will more than likely go back into um, academia but yeah the opportunities are there you just need to really um, be creative and push yourself network um, spend some time getting academically prepared other good tips if you can work on publications so the more publications you have that looks really good on your academic cv the more experience you have as lecturer um, if you can get involved in research projects then you might say actually as i'm a researcher can i share some of my expertise as a as a lecturer and just ask for the opportunities so if you're in a position where you've got some specialist expertise contact people network and say look i'm an expert in this can i offer you a session as a lecturer can I come and do a lecture for your students and even if you have to do it for free at first you know it's still getting that experience a couple of sessions might be just what you need to network and to sort of get some experience and then you can say look I've been guest lecturing here here and here um, can you consider me for a post or can you when you apply for a job you can say I have experience here here and here so I hope that was interesting hope that was helpful thank you so much for watching please do subscribe if you caught this and I will see you in the next one.